Today on Dr. Phil, a 13-year-old out of control. She has no respect for authority. Do you? I learned to fight from my mom. You go up to school and model the same defiant behavior that she does. It's what you're doing, not what she's doing. Her daughter needs help. These people are here to take you to one of the programs. But she's not going. Don't touch me. Without a fight. Get out of my way! Let's do it. Why don't we stop all the drama, stop all the fighting, and let's go get you better. Here we go. Have a good show, everybody. If I can help get this family back on track, are you willing to do that? Ready, free. Take. This is going to be a changing day in your life. Go, Dr. Phil. Well, smoking cigarettes, punching holes in walls, slapping, kicking, spitting. Sounds like a day spent in the yard of a women's prison, right? Well, it's not. It's actually a day in the life of a child, one who just turned 13. Take a look. Lexi is very out of control. She was suspended for five days in the sixth grade for fist fighting. I think the girl maybe just looked at her the wrong way. Lexi has been suspended twice this year for fighting in the seventh grade. It wasn't you are responsible for your own They're responsible for making actions. my life hard. Lexi has been in the principal's office over 50 times. Lexi's very proud of her fights. Lexi watches Dr. Phil, and she compares herself to the most outrageous out of control team, Brooke. If someone pisses me off, I end up fighting. Lexi made a fight list several students listed on a piece of paper under the heading people who are going to get their asses kicked i'll just be like you you can't win a fight with me so i'll just tell them pick a time and a place and they'll tell me and then we fight the last fight i got in the other girl's mouth was bleeding my fight's over when the other person hits the ground lexi did start getting physical with me and her dad last year. She has slapped me in the face. She has spit at me. I have not spit at you. She has spit I at me. I have not spit at her, that's disgusting. And she <laughs> like that in my face. No, I didn't! I have never spit at anybody when I'm in a fight. I either punch or hit, pull hair or shove. Never spit! I have called the sheriff on Lexi before. We did ground her. She snuck out the back door and ran off. We called the sheriff's department. They came to the house. I get disrespectful, and I get mad, and I say things that I shouldn't, but I mean them. She has no respect for authority of any kind, and we just don't know what else to do. So you're a fighter, <clears throat> right? Mm-hmm. And why? People make me mad. They call me names. What do they call you? A bitch and a scumbag. Why do they do that? We don't get along. You say that they just say bad things about you, but you've actually made a fight list, right? List? Didn't you make a list of the people that, just everybody like has a to-do list. <laughs> and you know, like I need to go pick up the cleaning, I need to go do this. You had a list, a to-do list of the people whose ass you needed to kick. No, right? I didn't have a list. You didn't have a fight list? You didn't get kicked out of school for having a fight list? No. You yeah. did. They had a notebook in your handwriting they found in your desk. It was in my handwriting. So they're all lying about that? The two girls were trying to get me in trouble. They were trying to get you in trouble? So you never had a fight list? No. I don't even start the fights. Yeah. How do you get along with the school? Uh, not so well anymore. <laughs> Yeah. I used to have a good relationship with the school. Um, Lexi was being bullied in the fifth and sixth grade, and um, I did complain to the school. I complained to the school board, and they never did anything about it. Um, so we do not have a good relationship any longer. Are you consider yourself angry? Lexi is angry all the time. No, I'm not. If, um... No, I'm not. You'd kind of like to understand this, right? Because you don't like being angry as much as you are, do you? Now, just now forget mom for a minute. That'll make you happy. 
What is it that you think makes you angry a lot of the time? Not anything specific, but just generally speaking, what do you think makes you tense and angry? Being home. And what is it about being there that creates a tension? Nobody gets along. Yeah, you know, there's, there's chaos there? Every day. Yeah. And believe me, that's not all your fault, I'll guarantee you. I know enough about the situation. Tell my mom that. that. Huh? Tell my mom that. It's not all her fault. I never, Thank you. <laughs> I never said it was all your fault. Yes, you do. I, I didn't no, I ask don't. you to start an argument. I just, she asked me to tell you something, and I did. And we're having a conversation over here. Okay. I'll get to you in a minute. Okay. How am I doing so far? Pretty good. All right. <laughs> See, we get along. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, no, seriously, it's not. It really isn't. See, I think these things are family. Everybody has a contribution there. You're the squeaky wheel that gets your finger pointed at you a lot, but there's a lot more to it than just you. But there is chaos there, right? It's a lot of err, 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 err. Yeah. Uh, Lexi proudly admits that she's been smoking cigarettes since she was 10. And that's not her only vice. Take a look. Last year, I found empty beer cans in Lexi's room. Recently, she told me she started smoking marijuana and that she likes it. I don't punish Lexi for smoking marijuana because I don't know when she's doing it. I have no evidence to support grounding her for that. I grew up way too fast. That's when I started drinking, smoking pot and smoking cigarettes. She told me she's going to do what she wants no matter what I say. My mom was sitting on the couch and me and my friend took a lot of her Smirnoff and brought it to my room and we were drinking it and my mom heard the bottles clink so we got caught. I've told Lexi I don't want her smoking on my property near my house. She completely changed her mind on that because now I can stand on the porch whenever I want and smoke a cigarette and she doesn't say anything to me. You think it's so bad that we smoke weed when you did cocaine and that could have killed you and weed won't kill us. But you also drink alcohol and can drink to the point until you're poisoned and die. But I don't, I know my limit. How are you doing in your job as a mother? Uh, obviously not good. When, you know, the kids are bad, I ground them. I take away their privileges. Um, it used to work. And as Lexi has gotten, um, you know, older the past few years, she's just gotten very disrespectful. She has no respect for authority. And she just doesn't listen. Mm -hmm. Do you? Do I listen? Yeah. Sometimes. Because I listen. I was listening to that tape, and I heard you saying things that you said, um, I, I don't want her smoking on my property. Really? I don't want it's her okay smoking It's OK if she's off all. the property. No, it's not. And she smokes marijuana, and you, you said, I don't, there's no consequences for that. It's, it's OK if she smokes marijuana. I know you don't prefer it, but you also don't deal with it, right? Because she tells me she's not doing it, and she's going to quit doing it, and then she'll tell me, you know, the next day, I like it, and I'm not going to quit, and there's nothing you can do about it. I don't know where she's doing it, when she's doing it. She's not doing it at my house. But you're not learning impaired. No. And so I've never... So when she tells you one time, OK, I'm not going to do it, and then another time she says, I'm going to do it, and I don't care what you say. And I've never seen her look or act like she was under the influence of marijuana. Uh -huh. You smoking dope every day? How come you told her you were? I don't do it every day. You smoke, what, how many times a week? Twice, maybe. Yeah, where do you get it? I don't, I'm not looking for a name. I'm just generally, where do you get it? Someone at school. You get it from, a, like, through a friend? Uh -huh. Do you know that that's illegal? Yeah. Yeah. You say she's creating a lot of drama at school. I would say so, yeah, I mean, uh, she would fight a buzzsaw. I mean, I, I see she's getting suspended. Uh, fifth grade suspended for fighting. Uh, fights two and three in the sixth grade. Fight four in the seventh grade. That, that was violent. It was posted on uh, Facebook. Then, I mean, all of this stuff it just goes on and on. And I, I see all this happening. So I know that there are problems at the schools probably driving them crazy. And then I look at the timeline with you, and you're up there fighting with the school. 
And she says it's chaotic at home. Is it? Yes, it is. Have you said you kids are going to and kill me? Yes, I have. Do you get upset and yell, shut the up? I hate you too? I have, yes. That's kind of getting down off the parent perch and dealing with them at their level, right? It is. When I'm pushed past my limit, yes. Mm. Not an excuse. No, it's not an excuse, Lexi, and I didn't say it was. Oh, no, actually, you did one. say it was an excuse. You, you said, when I get pushed past my limit, you push me past the limit, yeah, I'm going to get down your face and yell and scream at you and throw some mm -hmm. bombs your way. That's basically an excuse, yeah. You push me by my limit. When, not uh, my fault. You push me past the limit. When I get to that point like of anger, old excuse to me. I don't even realize what I say and do. That sounds time. like another excuse. I black out and just say it's, it. I'm not blacking out. I just start yelling, and I don't even think about what comes out of my mouth. You can't change what you don't acknowledge. And I need you to acknowledge that you are behaving in an inappropriate and immature manner. Absolutely. When you are yelling and screaming and telling them to shut the up and get out of here and all of that. I mean, you've given away your power when that happens. We need to calm this situation down. All right, we've got to take a break. Next, you're never going to guess who Lexi says taught her to fight. Find out when we come back. Lexi has physically assaulted me a half dozen times. She brought me to the ground by my hair. I have had bleeding on my arms from her fingernails puncturing my skin. I learned to fight from my mom. And later, Lexi tries to start a fight here at the Dr. Phil Studios. Get out of my way! Lexi's room is a nightmare. Every wall is written on with bad language, quotes, let's get drunk and make bad choices. There's half-eaten food laying on the floor under the bed behind the dresser. This had to be replaced because she destroyed this, this wall here. I've given up on Lexi's room, but I will not give up on Lexi. Well, let's get drunk and make bad decisions. That's just one of hundreds of things 13-year-old Lexi has just put up as graffiti on her bedroom walls. Now, Rita admits that she's made some parenting mistakes along the way that she's just not proud of. Take a look. According to you, we're such a pain in the ass. And you wish you never had us and blah, blah, blah. How many times have you called me a bitch? How many times have you called me a Wash your mouth. I have told Lexi to shut the up when she's God. called me names. I learned to fight from my older brother, my uncle, and my mom. I've swung at my mom quite a few times. We were fighting out here in the living room, and she brought me to the ground by my hair, and I smacked her in the face. Lexi has physically assaulted me a half dozen times, scratched me, dug her nails into my arm, pulled my hair. I have had bleeding on my arms from her fingernails puncturing my skin. There's been multiple times where she gets on top of me and she's screaming in my face. Lexi has thrown things at me, her cell phone, her remote, a shoe. I shut her door and I walk away. I'm either really happy or I'm really mad. And it's like on and off all the time with me. I'm most afraid that Lexi is gonna continue down a destructive path, get herself arrested or killed. Okay, can the three of us agree that this isn't working? Yes. And are you violent with your mother? Sometimes. Have you punched her, slapped her, scratched her, spit at her, pulled her hair, and kicked her? I haven't kicked her, and I have not spit at her. You have. Have okay, not. Okay, so you have punched her, slapped her, scratched her, and pulled her hair? Yeah. But you draw the line at spitting and kicking? Because I didn't do it. That's what I mean. You, you, you say you didn't spit and kick at her, but you say she did. Yes, she did. Well, if I own up to everything else, I'd own up to that, too. I didn't do it. Have you kicked your dad, punched him in the face? I punched him in the face, but I didn't mean to. Why are you writing all of the walls and defacing your own house? Because it's easier to write them down than to go say them to my parents. Have you ever hurt yourself? I've cut myself. Uh -huh. And why did you do that? Because I didn't know what else to do. My mom would always pick my dad over us, and she didn't want to talk to me or listen to me. Uh -huh. 
so you do it out of frustration. Her, her mother Rita says, ever since Lexi found out the truth about her biological dad is when she started spiraling out of control. Let's see what your mom has to say. When Lexi was 10 years old, she found out that my husband, Justin, was not her real father. She has never known anyone else as her father but Justin. We got married when she was four, and he legally adopted her. Justin and I didn't know if we would ever tell Lexi that he was not her biological father. My mom showed me the paperwork where my biological dad signed off on me. To me, my biological dad is just a sperm donor. I don't see why he would want to abandon a newborn baby. Lexi's behavioral issues started when she found out that Justin was not her real father. She didn't take it well. She would wake up screaming at night from nightmares. She was afraid that her biological father was gonna break in and steal her out of her bed and take her away. Lexi has never formally met him. For all I care, my biological dad can drop dead. Does that bother you? It does well bother me. That you, you were adopted and your biological father is out of the picture and not in a positive relationship? No, I look at that as a good thing because I don't want him in my life. Do you want to change the flow here? How do we do that? I don't know. You're the smart one. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, I don't know what was funny about that. <laughs> like I said, she's a smart girl. <laughs> um, but you, you agree. You, th something has to change, right? Because you know this is headed nowhere. So, you know, sometimes if you... If you look at someone else that's in a parallel track to where you are, you say, wow, I, I see myself in that story. I I'm going to talk to another mother with a daughter. You've been watching this, right? You've been seeing yourself in some of this, true? In a lot of it. Okay, I want them to watch me talk to you. Okay. And then I'm going to talk to everybody again about what I think needs to happen. So I'm going to talk to another mother. She's a single mom who says she's on the verge of a nervous breakdown, which you've felt like many times, because she can't control her violent, rebellious, and hateful 13-year-old daughter. We'll talk to her next. My daughter is the size of an adult. She'll physically block me. Please move so I can get in my vehicle. Stop, my leg is in there. The minute she wakes up, you can feel the mood of the house change. It's almost 8 o'clock, so she's going to be here. Jennifer says her 13-year-old daughter was once a precious, perfectly behaved Girl Scout. Now mom says she is a defiant, hateful, violent bully who is bigger and stronger than she is. My daughter's behavior has increasingly gotten more violent. She's gone from just being defiant and disrespectful. Get off! Get, please give me my computer. She started to get physical with me about a year ago. She was over here, came and um, shoved me down on the bed and just started hitting me and punching me. I was left with bruises on my upper arm. My daughter is the size of an adult. She's stronger than me. She'll physically block me from entering or exiting a room to the point where I'll have to like start squeezing by and then when that happens, she'll shove me into the wall and try to hold me there. She blocked me from getting into my vehicle. Please move so I can get in my vehicle. Stop, my leg is in there. Stop, my Oh my gosh. The minute she wakes up, you can feel the mood of the house change. It's almost eight o'clock, so she's going to be here. It's always chaos. There's never peace in the home. She runs the house. Please get off the computer. Please get off my computer now. When she's not happy, nobody in the house is happy. Please get off my computer, I said. Turn the, computer, then turn the camera off. That's not the way it works. I'm asking you to do something, now please do it. Turn the camera off. 
My family and myself are walking on eggshells all of the time. One day I am scared that she will hurt somebody or herself. I'm on the verge of a nervous breakdown. Okay, you've been watching what's gone on so far, right? Yeah. You heard me talking to Rita and mm -hmm. her daughter, Lexi. What do you take away from that conversation as you watch me talk to them? Um, that's my life. It's hard to watch. I can't even look at her, Rita, in the eyes because I know what she's going through. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of this lays on me a lot more than what I initially thought, I think. Yeah. So what did you take away from, what, what did you learn from that conversation? I think my daughter's hurting a lot more than what I did when I first got here. Mm -hmm. um, some things that Lexi was saying about her <clears throat> mom not listening and, and some interactions that they have with each other. <clears throat> I see a lot of that in, in my relationship with my daughter. Well, she's punched you. Yes. Because she did just simply because she didn't want to shower. That's how the fight started. Same situation, what, seven detentions uh, at school, 20 absences, mm -hmm. had an in-school suspension. She just really is defiant in the face of authority, right? Anybody and everybody that has any kind of authority, um, she will just flat out defy. Here's a good example. We have a tape of Jennifer that Jennifer shot to show me what she's up against. Now, you're going to see that no matter what she tries, her daughter will not budge. Now, this is just in the face defiance. Take a look. What am I supposed to tell Don't Grandma? Talk to me, you're leaving me. Is Grandma well, supposed to pick you up or not? I have to leave Don't for talk work. To me. You're I'm me. not doing anything. I just have Don't to go to work. To me. You're to me. Tell me what I'm supposed Don't to talk do. To me. You're me. I'm not being mean. Don't I'm just asking you're you what me. you're doing. So that I can go to don't work. Don't talk to me. Because Grandma's calling don't me. Don't talk to and me. And I don't know what to tell her. Shut up. Okay, a little hard to reason. That's every day. Every day. Every day with everything. No matter what. No matter what. And so, how did that turn out? How did that? I work? ended up leaving for work. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and she I give did up. What? I give up mm -hmm. when things get to that point because like, you can hear the frustration in my voice. I really try to be conscious of my tone and conscious of what I'm saying, thinking that I will set the tone. And because if I escalate, she's going to escalate. But it just gets to the point where I have to just give up and let her do what she wants. You've got to have a theory. Yeah. Take me back to that moment. Why do you think she chose that just oppositional, defiant response to you in that moment? Because she didn't want to get up. But she is putting so much energy into getting rid of you and not getting up. It's beyond just not wanting to get up. Yeah. And she said she hates living with you. Every day. Wants away from you. Every day. You've tried to take away the things that she enjoys. You've stripped her room down, gotten back to basics. Per You've your done advice. the things that seem to make sense. <laughs> yeah. No effect. None. None. All right. We're going to take a break. And I'll tell you what I want to do. I want to arrange, rearrange a little furniture here so I can talk to these two mothers alone. No kids around in the house, just the moms and me. We'll be right back. You can't understand why she's a fighter. You can't understand why she is so angry. Look at what she's doing. Isn't she horrible? Look at this, all she's doing. It's what you're doing, not what she's doing. Around 2009, I entered recovery from alcoholism. And that is when I noticed more disrespectful behavior coming out of my daughter. I see a lot of myself in her. I think my daughter is an addict without the drugs. And when something easier comes along, she's gonna take the path of least resistance. I think that it's only a matter of time before my daughter turns to drugs. Okay, there's a lot of history here for both of you who have been shaping and molding these young women into what they are today. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? Yes. Do you agree with 100%. that? 
And I, I ask you, let, let, me, let me just talk with you a minute here. Okay. I, I ask you what you thought. Well, she just doesn't want to get up. She's just defiant. She just doesn't like authority. She just doesn't this. She just doesn't like that. Really? Is that really what you think? No. Then why did you waste my time and your time here telling me that, come on, things have happened in your life and hers that have impacted you both greatly? Yes. Let's talk about 07. In 07, that would have been six years ago. Mm -hmm. Six years ago, she would have been seven. Right? Yes. Six years ago, you were addicted to opiates. Mm -hmm. True? True. So you have a child in the home whose mother is a drug addict. I was, yes. Do you think that affects this child in any way? I, I absolutely, absolutely. Um, my way of thinking and my thought process and the unmanageability of my life before I entered recovery absolutely has impacted my children. And that's why I'm here. I don't know how to get, take the wake of my storm and align it with what I want for my family today. And where's her dad? He left when she was two months old? Yeah. Yeah. So he's gone. Yeah. Does she try to reach out to him? She does. How often? Um, uh, the last six or seven months, quite often. How about every day? Yeah, I didn't know that until we started interviewing. Every day? Yeah. She tries to reach out and find him. And what does he do? He rejects her, turns off his phone, deletes his Facebook, absolutely refuses to have any interest in her life. And it breaks my heart. How'd she get along with your dad? He was the most consistent, strong male role model in her life. Yeah. yeah. And where is he now? Um, he passed away July 7th, 2010. And that's when instantly I seen the violence start coming out with things getting thrown, doors getting slammed, challenging me physically. My dad was the strongest male role model in my daughter's life. Once my dad died, things started to get physical. A couple months after he died, I was doing laundry, and we had his obituary laminate. And that's when I realized she had been carrying it around since he died. She needs to get this out. She needs to talk about this. I believe that my daughter's anger is a coping mechanism for her emotions. She won't even acknowledge that he's dead. No. She says, um, if she says it out loud, it'll make it real. She's seven years old. Her mother is addicted to drugs. Yeah. You've moved her 12 times. Her father rejects her, won't take her calls, deletes his Facebook. The one male role model in her life dies. She won't even acknowledge that he's dead and carries his obituary to this day, laminated in her pocket right now. She is stuck. She is confused. She doesn't know what to do. And you tell me, gee golly, I don't know, Dr. Phil. She just won't wake up in the morning. I don't know what's going on. Are you kidding me? I don't ask myself why she is doing what she's doing. I ask myself, why, why not? not? And you bring your daughter in here, and you got the same chip on your shoulder that she does. You're modeling the same defiant behavior in the face of authority that she is. You cave on every form of discipline you ever try. You go up to school and model exactly the same defiant in-your-face behavior with the school that she does. You fight with her. You tell her to go jump in the damn lake. And you, and you can't understand why she's a fighter. You can't understand why she is so angry. Look at what she's writing on her walls. Look at what she's doing. Isn't she horrible? Look at this, all she's doing. It's what you're doing, not what she's doing. She is a victim of what's going on at the parent level. You two have created brilliant daughters. You just run them off in the ditch. But they're brilliant daughters. You ought to be proud of the daughters you've created. We just got to get them back up on the road. You hear why she said she's writing on the wall? I want them to read it. We don't have to say it to them. 
she's cutting herself because she's so frustrated. Why is she frustrated? Because nobody will listen. Guys, come on. How do I do it? How, you, I know what's important, but I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to apply it to my life practically. Well, I'm gonna answer that okay. in detail with verbs in my sentences for both of y'all. Because okay. uh, I do have a plan when we come back. You never know when she's gonna hit her brother and he is five years younger. You know, she will just haul off and slug him and throw things at him. With a three-year-old Olivia, it's more verbal. My daughter can dominate her very easily with yelling. I'm scared to leave them alone. Well, I'm back with mothers Jennifer and Rita. And we have been talking about their two 13-year-old daughters. Listen, I've been telling you that I think you have to have huge ownership in this, right? Yes. And you know, you know the truth when you hear it, right? Yes. yes. Come on. Now, I will tell you both, your different situations, but there are some common elements here, which is why I want to talk to you together. I will tell you both, I think you're in over your heads. There's a point at which the demands become so many or so great that they outstrip your parenting skills. And I think that's where you are. And I think both of you need a break from these girls and these girls need a break from you. I'm gonna recommend that these girls be placed outside the home for a period of time right now in a therapeutic school environment for a period of time. What period of time? I, I don't know. That, that is to be determined. And I am suggesting that we do that because I don't have anywhere to send you to because you have other children to take care of, you have other things to do, but you have as much work to do while they're gone as they do while they're gone, which means I've got to bring help in to help you while they're gone because if we take them out and put them somewhere to get them the help and the skills and then bring them back to the same approach that you have now, you, you, you will undo it all. Now, for your daughter, there is a place called Seuss Seasons, and it is located in North Carolina. And Kristen Hayes, the communications director for the Aspen Education Group, is here. Can you talk about this a little bit for, for Jennifer's daughter? Sure, sure. For your daughter, the Seuss of the Carolinas program, it has a clinically sophisticated treatment um, that has issue-specific groups for uh, preteens and teens dealing with mental and behavioral health issues, primary substance abuse and co-occurring disorders, even mm -hmm. spectrum disorders. But the Seuss Season program is especially for younger teens, ages 11 to 13. It helps them to identify the limiting beliefs and um, unhealthy behaviors that can so often lead to uh, or prevent them from pursuing constructive goals and, and personal achievement. And for Lexi, I, I think a, a different approach really fits here and it's a youth wilderness program that is in Idaho and I, I think that it is tailor-made uh, for her and I'll, I'll let Kristen talk about why. The, the Seuss Youth Program in Idaho excels at working with younger teens uh, ages 11 to 13 by providing them with an interruption in the negative self uh, defeating behaviors um, using clinical intervention and assessment techniques that are really critical to long-term treatment success. And while some, simultaneously in both programs, uh, working with the parents, working with you guys, uh, to identify new strategies uh, for and, and relationship, a new relationship with your, with your daughters. We have seen some unbelievable results out of these programs and we offer that as a gift from us Thank you. to you and, and to your families and so what 
I'm going to do now, if you guys, does this make sense to you? Yes. yes. Thank you. Is this something you Thank can you embrace? Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, now, I will tell you, I'm going to go backstage and talk to these two girls, and I'm going to tell them that this is an option. Your first job as parents is to get them there. Okay. And they may resist this. And look, I think the important thing for parents is to avoid a confrontation with your children at every turn. But when you have one, you don't lose. And if, if they become defiant and say they don't want to go, which they probably will because yeah. it's a fear response, then your job is to get them there. Yeah. And if necessary, we will provide transporters who will get them there. We can do this easier, we can do it hard. But you need to be committed that this is where you're going and that no isn't an option and that they're going easy or hard. Fair enough? Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. I'm going to go backstage and talk to these girls, uh, just the three of us, when we come back. We're back. We have to get to her before she can lock herself in a bathroom. Um, arm herself with a kitchen knife. Hi, Jennifer. People are here to take you, okay? Get away from Hold me! On. You are going. That's not even up for debate. I have recommended to your mothers that you guys need a break. Kristen will tell you some about it, and you can ask all the questions you want. Kristen, I'll leave it with you. So what we're offering are our therapeutic wilderness programs. It's basically an extended camping trip, if you will, but with therapy involved, with other people your age to kind of going through similar issues. Oh, well, you can tell her, Mom. You can tell her. Yeah, you can tell me. These people are here to take you to one of the programs. F you! Don't touch me! Come on, well, don't try to leave and we won't touch you. Please don't try to leave and we won't touch you. Do not f touch me! Get out of my don't, way! Please don't push, relax. Lexi, 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 come on. Lexi, Lexi, please. Get out of the way! Please, please, please. I hate you! Talk to you alone, and then maybe you can talk to her again. Okay? Maybe you can get off me. Will you sit down, please? If you get off, off me, get off me. We're yes. actually taking you to a program in Idaho. Can okay. my mom change it? <coughs> Answer my question. So, sit, and I won't touch you. That's the bottom line. If you don't want to be touched, please stay seated. Okay? If you can calm down, Lexi, relax. Does it look like it's calm down? I want you to talk to your mom again, but listen, it's not going to probably change what's happening here. The bottom line is, everybody who loves you is very concerned about your situation, and they want to get you some treatment. We need to understand each other in a couple ways. Yeah, I understand, Gino. Shut up and let me leave. We're going to go to our car, and once no, you're in our car not. calmly, then you can talk to your mom. Pop out on that side of this house. Mom, tell them to go away. Tell them again. Go away! How are you feeling now? <laughs> Scared. I'm worried. But you know you did the right thing. I know I did the right thing. Well, go to drphil.com where I have posted more resources for parents and a special thanks to Kristen Hayes of the Aspen Education Group. Uh, we appreciate all the work that you do with the kids and all the different programs. You guys are great and I'm going to have links on drphil.com for all the Aspen Education uh, programs so if you want to check them out you'll find it there. They do great work in my opinion so and I, I thank you guys for coming and sharing and we got a lot of work to do right? 
Yes. But we're leaning forward and we're going to do it and lots of help and resources uh, headed your way. So we'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Jennifer and the mom reached out to Dr. Phil for help. Please move so I can get in my vehicle. Stop! Stop! My leg is Stop! in there. Stop! Stop! Baby! Oh, my gosh. We have to get to her before she can lock herself in a bathroom, um, arm herself with a kitchen knife. All right, here we go. We're going in the house right now. I can see mom inside the garage waiting for us. Hi, Jennifer. I'm Mike. Nice to meet you. All right. Sorry, it's under these circumstances. It's been worse since we've been back. Right. Sure. Going. These people are here to take you, okay? I'm uh, Mike. Hold on. Wait for me. Can we have your phone, please? No. Relax. Get away from Hold me. On. My partner's name is Melissa. You are going. That's not even up for debate. I know you don't want to. You might be scared, but it's the biggest day of your life, practically. Get away from Hold me. On. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Stay right with me. All right. Do you want me to bring your mom out for you? If she yells or swears, get out of the car. I don't want to traumatize her. Cogging mom is a positive sign right now. Since being on Dr. Phil, I've just tried to avoid her because I knew this was going to happen. All right, let's roll. I'm committed to do whatever it takes to get this family better. We're at the Grand Rapids Airport, unloading Jennifer's daughter. This way, please. Thank you. We're going to the Seuss of the Carolinas facilities. We're on our way. That's it. Thank you. A special thanks to transport specialist Michael Montreal of Safe Interventions. Michael successfully transported Jennifer and Rita's teenage daughters from today's show to their respective Seuss programs. We'll be following their stories closely.